Good morning. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. It's July 5th, 2020, and I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July weekend. So last week we introduced the idea of beloved community. Today's message is called Being the Beloved. And we said that such a community would be inclusive, have deep faith in the future, work with the cosmic mind to bring about peace, harmony, and reconciliation, express compassionate care, practice the principles of nonviolence, seek original goodness, love all humans in the planet, and understand that the universe is on the side of justice and would be committed to direct action. So in order to become a beloved community, we must first become and be the beloved. And today's message begins as a four-part series on this topic of being the beloved that was inspired by Henri Nguyen and his book, The Life of the Beloved. So who are you? That's sort of the perennial question. And we're hard put sometimes to find the right answer. Ernest Holmes wrote in his book, Effective Prayer, love overcomes both hate and fear. However, love does not overcome hate and fear through controversy, argument, or force, but by a subtle power of transformation. As light overcomes the darkness, as presence of heat causes the cool, coolness of a room to change until it's warm and comfortable. So the radiant action of love and peace dissipates fear, hate, and confusion. And love is the victor in every case. So love breaks down the iron bars of thought, shatters the walls of material belief, severs the chains of bondage, which thought imposed and sets the captive free. So we begin with the definition of beloved. We're all searching for God, for the fullness of love. And deep in the recess of our minds lies that treasure that we're seeking to become the beloved, to experience that love. Henri Nguyen would say we're already beloved of the beloved with a capital B. We're already the beloved of spirit or of God. Everyone has to turn inside and believe that he or she can commune with the source and believe that he or she is a representative of God on earth. And this complete acceptance by God is depicted in Jesus's parable of the prodigal son. The prodigal son, as you know, leaves home with his inheritance, goes out and squanders it everywhere, and then one morning wakes up in a pig pen and gets the idea, well, I better go home now. And he goes home and is met by his father who greets him warmly without judgment and prepares a feast for his homecoming. So we are all called to come home like the prodigal son and become who we really are. Becoming the beloved is the great spiritual journey we all have to make. And what is the nature of this becoming? How do we awaken to the beloved? Well, number one, we have to be let the truth of our belovedness, our oneness with the divine reality, become enfleshed in everything we do, say, or think. And then we have to claim the realization of our own divinity, the truth that we are the beloved. And when we do that, we will experience joy and peace in our lives. And then God in us, as us, is that which we are. As our minds partake of this universal wholeness, we will turn to the idea that we are the beloved of God, and we will find this place in our being to be fearless, happy, and complete. And the beloved will begin to flow into all practical matters of our life. Henri Nguyen says that it helps to him to use four words to uh, think about the enfolding mystery of the beloved. And the first one is taken or chosen. And the second is blessed. Then the third is broken and finally given. And so these four words are going to be my topic over the next 
three weeks that follow today. But today we're going to address the word taken. To become the beloved, we have to claim that we're taken. We've already surrendered and know that there is something greater than we are. And that is to say that we already know we're part of the beloved. We need to have the spiritual conviction that we are united with the whole, that everything's all right. And if we only knew it, um, it would be true and not true at the same time. It's true in principle, but it's only true with the practice that we make of that truth. We have to embrace the all good and know that we're already chosen. We're already taken. We're already part of the beloved. Now the word taken may seem cold to you. Chosen might be a better synonym. We have been taken or chosen. And when I know I'm chosen, I know that I'm seen as a special person. The most common greeting in a South African Zulu tribe is Sawubona. Sawubona literally means, I see you, you are important to me, and I value you. And it's a way to make the other person visible and to accept them with all their nuances and flaws. In response to this greeting, people usually say Shiboka, which means I exist for you. Uh, Sawubona means all my attention is with you. I see you. I allow myself to discover your needs, to see your fears, to identify your mistakes, and to accept them. And I accept you for what you are. You are part of me. Oddly, the term Sawubona acquired importance in the 1990s because of a leadership book called The Fifth Discipline, The Art and Practice of the Learning Organization that was written by Peter Singe, a professor at Stanford University. He spoke of the Zulus and the magnificent way in which they interact with one another. He wrote about how they handled problems with one another. He said they'd likely become one of the most powerful civilizations in Africa. Saubona, I see you as you are. In Western culture, the most common greeting people use is, hello, how are you? And of course, we're, we're taken aback if someone actually answers the question. Most of us express these words quickly without waiting for a response. So the Zulus, on the other hand, promoted the need to see each other slowly and as they are. They look for moments when they can maintain eye contact with the person they're talking to. They have learned to listen and feel other people. They have learned how to embrace another person's soul and how to find and heal people's dark corners and wounds. It's important for everyone to be a contributing member of their community. So sawubona is a word that reminds us to trust one another. It reminds us to see the other person as they are and pay attention to them. We have to authentically understand them and see their needs and desires, fears and sorrows and virtues. Who wouldn't want to be seen this way? Well, it's really enriching to make another pe person feel seen. Some people have found similarities between Sawubona and the Hindi Namaste. These are more than greetings. They're ways to enlighten the other person by communicating how important they are to you. And there's immense beauty in these gestures. There's something healing and even cathartic about them that can serve as inspiration in our daily lives. When someone from the Zulu community commits an offensive act, their presence is required at the center of the village. Their friends and family and neighbors circle around them. And for two days, they go to the person and greet them saying, Sapupon. They start reminding them 
of their good deeds, of their virtues and successes, and all their great qualities. For the Zulu community, no person is born evil. Sometimes crises and imbalances make us stray away from our natural goodness. And the purpose of these gatherings is uh, to remind the person they're actually a good person at heart. And they show them how important they are to the rest of the community. The purpose of the gathering is to praise that person and give them visibility so they can return to a path of harmony and joy. Therefore, each time a member of the community addresses another with the word Sawubona, the other person responds by saying, Shikoba, I exist for you. The Zulu people believe human beings exist only if other people see and accept them. Therefore, nothing is more satisfying than being forgiven after a mistake. This African tribe truly embodies the beloved community and what it means to be beloved. We need to learn to see others as they are. And as the Sawubana greeting goes, I see you, I accept you, I see your needs, I forgive your mistakes, and I promote cohesion in our community. And when we do that, we will know our unity and oneness with God. Long before you were born, you were part of history. You existed in God's heart. And the infinite sees you as precious and of value. And herein lies the mystery. To be taken or chosen doesn't mean others are rejected. Our material world is very competitive and we can often recall when we weren't chosen for something. We weren't chosen to a team. We weren't chosen for a special award. We weren't chosen for a job we wanted. We weren't chosen to be the president of the class. We weren't chosen to lead the Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts. We weren't chosen as a grant recipient. We weren't chosen for a special relationship we were seeking. And then we're told, well, it's not that you weren't good enough. It's just that someone else was a little better. Not very comforting, is it, to be told that? But when we're chosen of the beloved of God, it's radically different. Spirit accepts everyone in his or her own uniqueness. It's a compassionate choice because God is one of love. It's hard for our minds to wrap around this, that we're totally accepted by God. We should dare to claim that we are chosen or taken. But this eternal dance between us and spirit is taken. And if we lose touch with how we're chosen, we can get into the temptation of self-deprecation or self-rejection, and we'll never grow to become the beloved. You may have an inner critic inside you that says, you're nothing special, you're just one more mouth to feed. You're just another problem. Many children don't feel welcome at all in the world. They ask themselves, was I really wanted? And some mothers have the gall to say to their child, you weren't planned, you were an accident. We are God's chosen ones. Even if the world does not choose us, even if one or more parent rejects us, the outside world can't make the judgment about whether we're chosen or not. How do we get in touch with the beloved God that has all ears for us, especially when it seems we're surrounded by rejection? There are some guidelines Henry Nguyen offers for the spiritual struggle. First, he says, unmask the manipulation, the power-hungry, destructive world. I think we've seen some of this by unmasking uh, policies of police brutality and racism. Unmask the lies that men and women are created equal. That has not become a reality in America today as of yet. Every time you feel hurt or rejected, dare to say, these feelings are strong, but they're not the truth about me. The truth is 
I am a chosen child of God, and in God's mind, I am called the beloved and am held safe. Look for people and places where truth is spoken and where you are reminded of your deepest identity as the chosen one, as a beloved. And we like to think CSL is a place like this. Then don't be seduced by your emotions that will hijack you into self-rejection. Celebrate your chosenness. And the best way to celebrate is through gratitude. When someone has done something kind for you, tell them, thank them in words, flowers, or a phone call or a text. When someone, uh, or when something is going really well, don't get into the cynical state of mind of saying, how long is this gonna last? Stay in a state of thanksgiving and avoid the shadow side of things. In the house of God, there are many mansions and there is a unique and special place for everyone. Be in touch with Thomas Aquinas' concept of original goodness or Matthew Fox's original blessing. Good is the nature of God and God is for us. God has our back. Nothing in the universe operates against us. Emma Curtis Hopkins was fond of saying, my God is my good and I deserve to have it. So I do have to be in touch with my own goodness to discover the goodness in someone else. Once I claim how I've been taken or chosen, I can see Joe or Fred or Anna as a person who has much to offer because God's love is inclusive. And that's one of the first qualities of an inclusive community. All of us are part of the mosaic of human existence. We are priceless and irreplaceable. We belong together. And so this week's assignment is to affirm, I am priceless and irreplaceable. I am the beloved of the beloved. Let's say that together. I am priceless and irreplaceable. I am the beloved of the beloved. Next week, we're going to discover the second aspect of being part of the beloved, our blessedness. And in closing, I want you to remember that life has made you a little different from anyone else. You can learn from others, but you can never become anyone other than yourself. Don't be afraid to look at how you're separating yourself from a power that is greater than you are a power great enough to overcome every single obstacle. Remember too, that you have already been taken. You have already been chosen by the beloved. You are that right now. And when you accept it, you are being the beloved and all is well. And so it is.